Hi, it's time for another important video for an important person, and that is you. I had a very strange dream a few weeks ago um, that I wanted to share. I didn't really want to share it, actually. It was really, really disturbing, and I wasn't sure it came from God or what. Um, but I did, in the end, after some consideration, feel that I should share it as a testimony and a witness um, that there is very real child and sex trafficking going on um, in the world, which, I mean, we already know that, of course there is, um, but that it is on a level and an extent that we have not considered a possibility. I had a dream where I was trapped in this facility, I'll say, with other people, and it was indoor and outdoor, but um, there was, like, no way of getting out. Uh, they were very careful, the people who ran this place, to um, really lock it down. And there were all kinds of people inside, mostly women and children. Um, and during the time when I was in the dream, there or in this place, um, there was not any abuse happening right then because the people who ran it had flown away somewhere else and were going to come back again. Um, so I didn't actually experience abuse in the dream, but I did see a lot of signs of that happening. Uh, it was very system systematized, and it was organized crime. And the people who were doing this, the perpetrators, uh, did not think of the victims as equals. They were people that they had trapped and uh, enslaved, and they were just there for their pleasure. And uh, it, fe it felt like... On a spiritual level, these evil people who were perpetrating these crimes were experiencing some sort of surge in spiritual power for doing these acts of terror on other people. Um, no age was too young. I saw um, cribs for babies. Um, there was no empathy. Um, they were experiencing a sick form of pleasure over other people's pain, the most exciting thing for them was to make their victim as uncomfortable as possible. The worse you were feeling, the better they were feeling. That is so demonic. Abuse was part of the culture of the abusers. There was a systemized organization and everyone participated in the abuse. And, um, if anyone attempted to turn away, it was made very clear that victim or perpetrator, but mostly this was geared toward the victims, that you would be killed immediately. And not only that, but like your um, existence would be erased. They would erase you as much as they could that you ever were even a person. Um, in fact, what I saw in my dream was like a... A, an exhaust, like a, like a like a chute for trash, but it was big enough for a human, and they could like slide your body into that chute, and it would be incinerated. I told you this was dark stuff. Okay, um, so they showed special interest in certain persons to abuse, um, especially. I want to say like preteen boys and babies. Um, and that, that there were certain people that they tried to take care of, that keep their health up, um, so that they could continually abuse them without breaking the person to the point where they would die. Um, I don't want to go into any more details about this dream. You get the picture. It was awful. Uh, why did I dream this? Would God send me a dream like this? I don't, I don't think he did. I don't, that doesn't seem like him. Um, and I don't know if it was the devil. I didn't feel spiritually attacked. It was sort, it sort of felt neutral, so I'm not sure where this dream came from. Um, but after considering it, I asked God, what do I do with this uh, information? What do I do with this dream? Is it, is it one of those weird things that my mind just came up with and I need to just move along? Or is this something that I need to share? And as soon as I questioned him on whether or not I need to share it, I just felt like a quiet, um, calm, 
assurance, like, go ahead and share it. Um, this, uh, this was interesting. Okay. Recently, another person that I've been talking to about devil and demons, um, who doesn't like to deal with things that are sad and depressing, and I understand that, um, but it is reality, uh, oh, and it, it does need to be talked about enough so that people understand that it's real and that it's happening and how to avoid it and how to overcome it. Um, and I do feel like that's been placed on me um, as part of my mission to make sure that I warn as many people as I can, which is why I put these videos out. Um, so this person, um, so this is a totally unrelated story. So somebody that I um, know very well and try to talk to about the devil kind of didn't want to believe me and didn't want to think about it and would sh kind of like shake off anytime um, I brought it up. And recently that person probably in the last month, told me that they had had a dream where um, they were like watching something on their iPad or their phone and um, I was sitting by them and a demon came on the screen and it really scared them. Um, and they tried to click off the screen um, and then I, either they did click off the screen or they couldn't, I can't, I, I can't remember. But then uh, just a minute later, the devil himself, his face appeared on her screen and it was extremely uh, frightening for her spirit. And she felt very um, vulnerable. Um, and then, I don't know, I can't remember if she said that I helped her in the dream or what, but it's interesting that I was there. Um, so... After she had that dream, it was really disturbing to her. She woke up and um, thought about it, and then she contacted me and told me um, what had happened and that she prayed about the dream, and the Lord told her that Satan is afraid of me, which is really interesting because I'm kind of afraid of him. Not, not, ugh, not that I... You can be afraid of someone who's dangerous and that you want to be wary of them, not that you're afraid that they can um, control you in your spirit. I don't feel like my fear of the devil is um, of a nature that he can control me in any way through fear, but I do fear him in that I realize how dangerous he is. And um, Anyway, if the devil does fear me, which is crazy... Um, I'm, I'm like no one in a way, I'm just a random person, but I think that maybe he is unhappy with how much I'm exposing. I'm, I'm trying to expose his agenda so that he can't trick people. Um, basically, he's a magician and he does all sort of sleight of hand. Um, he does all sorts of um, mysteries and he reveals things in a dramatic fashion that seem miraculous, but if you could see behind the scenes, it would be very disturbing, and you would realize just how much he does to deceive and distract us. Um, but I am getting off topic of this dream. Um, okay, so I felt like I learned a few things out of this dream. One is that I, on an intellectual level, completely understand that there are sex trafficking and um, child abuse and, and not just sex trafficking, but other kinds of um, slavery happening, not only around the world, but in the United States. I understood that on an intellectual level, and I've, I've read stuff about that, and I've um, gone to talks to hear people speak about it, but um, it felt so real to me, and it felt pertinent to me. I, I sort of gained a new emotional understanding of what it would feel like to go through something like that and to be in a situation where you felt so powerless and so afraid that at any moment something very horrific could happen to you um, and the kind of fear energy that that brings into your spirit um, sex abuse or physical restraint or um, kind of the forcing of the mind the point of it is for the abuser to sear his or her conscience 
This is something, remember in a couple videos ago I told you that I was sitting in the temple and receiving different um, bits of inspiration. Sometimes it just feels like the Lord turns on the floods of inspiration and on this particular occasion, this is one of the things that came up that um, I got a specific verbiage on and um, that is that it sears the conscience. Abusing someone in a very forceful way, in a sexual way for power for pleasure like that um, is very much a searing of the conscience and I get this visual of like a hot iron on skin that's very destructive. Um, Satan finds your conscience a major obstacle in hurting you, um, in turning you into a demonic type presence. Um, there, there is a major obstacle for him in turning people into demons. Um, but if you burn your conscience, if you choose to allow your behaviors and thoughts to become bestial and demonic, you are on the path towards becoming a psychopath, to have psychopathic thoughts and tendencies. And that creates for you an off-kilter logic that you operate in. You feel like you're thinking straight, but you can't. You can't do that. You're badly damaged and easily manipulated by the devil at that point. And you may feel like you are stone-cold sober, but when you have um, an off-kilter view of the world, of reality, you can't, you can't see things clearly any longer. This makes you very easy for the devil, for the devil to manipulate. Um, especially if he has damaged you and your conscience and your spirit to the point where you find pleasure in hurting others or hurting yourself. Um, that is very, very destructive to your soul and spirit and to the people that you hurt. I mean, obviously, but the main point of it isn't, I, I, think, I think the devil gets pleasure out of any time someone's uncomfortable or in pain or unhappy. And so for him, that's like a fringe benefit. But the actual abuse that's happening is that you are searing your own conscience. You're burning the morality right out of you when you um, choose to participate in things like molestation, like rape, like murder for pleasure. It's really dark and, and twisted. I don't really enjoy discussing this, but it's important. It's important. This is an important piece of knowledge um, to understand that the point of Satan making people tempted into doing these things isn't even necessarily primarily about the victim. It's about you choosing to hurt yourself, um, whether or not you realize that. Abuse for the victim is very difficult to deal with. It can be overcome. You can heal from that. Abuse, um, the effect that it has on the perpetrator, I think is actually worse. I think it's more damaging because the victim can at some point be brought to understand that it wasn't their fault, but the perpetrator cannot have that um, understanding because it's not true. Um, so they have to deal with that. They need more of God's help and more of God's grace, um, more of God's healing to get over being an abuser. I think that's why it's so important to forgive um, abusers in our lives because, yeah, you may be hurting being a victim of abuse, but the abuser themselves, if they aren't already hurting from their actions, will eventually be hurting a lot more than you ever did. That's just the nature of God. If they don't repent, they're going to feel all of the abuse that they did to you. And then they're going to feel all of the um, consequences that come with, the natural consequences that come with um, choosing poorly, choosing to hurt people. That kind of energy um, is not of God. And you reap what you sow. You're either of the kingdom of God or you are of the kingdom of the devil. And if you do devilish things, then you're in Satan's power. And he will exercise his right to hurt you and to make you feel as 
awful as possible about what you've done. I don't really know how to lighten up a video like that um, at the end. It, that was a dark one, but I do feel like it's important to share. And I think it's important that we all understand that trafficking of humans is super evil, but it's happening right now. And actually the pace of it is picking up, unfortunately, as this world becomes more um, black and white. I don't know. The darkness is getting darker and God's kingdom is getting stronger as well. And the light is getting brighter. There's a shifting. There is a sifting, really. There's a shift in the way things are because we're being sifted. Uh, we're sifting ourselves, actually, into categories. Um, there's no more fence sitting. There's no more time to sit on the fence. You have to choose a side. And if you haven't chosen God, think again. It's time to choose. There's no more time to wait around. If you don't know the Lord is your Savior, you need to know that now. I'll just leave you with that today. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Love you, brothers and sisters.